Smoke. Something's burning. I hear shouting. Great Someone God. needs help. Allow us peace in this plane and beyond. Teach us care when they would be reckless. Teach us certainty when we would have doubt. So it is broken, and so is it on. Grand Duke Ravengard could be inside. Don't just stand there. Push! We don't have much time. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear you? Stay where you are! We don't have much time! Find out! The heat coming off that door. Opening it could spell trouble. Lost in thought. No one's stopping yet. Not now. I'm afraid proper thanks must wait. Fresh air. At last. Your boldness is a blessing. I'm in your debt. Counselor, are you all right? 
takes more than mere fire to break me, Yuva. Now listen close, Fist. Duty calls. Drow have taken Grand Duke Alder Ravenguard westward, if my eyes and ears can be believed. Gauntlet, report to the manor and send for reinforcements. We must find the Duke. On your command, Counselor. The rest of you, count the dead. Take word of their sacrifice to this city. And you, I must ask again for your aid. Please, rescue Ravenguard from his drow captors. The Council will reward you for your effort. May I trust you'll see it through? A champion indeed. He's the invisible force holding Baldur's Gate together. Without him, the city faces collapse. In fact, I fear that may have been the intention of those who abducted him. Thank you. And should your courage falter, remember the Duke's generosity. Go. You should pick up the drow trail with ease. I will seek reinforcements and join you when I can. Fist, to work. Drowcraft armor. No magic left, though. Sun's too bright. A dragon rider. My kin are near. It's huge. It would be too much to hope that's nothing to do with us, wouldn't it? I suggest we admire it from afar. What are you doing? Hold up before they see you, Magresham! What? Apart from the dragon? Look. That lot are swarming all over the bridge. I don't know what they want, but it can't be good. I'm going to find another way around. You ought to do the same. I doubt a fight against them would go your way. Nobody. Just another harassing fool trying to stay alive. There's plenty of us around. What? Just follow you around? I go my own way. Alone. Rag. That's it. I'm getting out of here. 
Drop your weapons! I'll feed your innards to the ants before I do that, Istik. This is your last chance! No, look up. That was your last chance, Istik. Now burn! Wasting time, Beretta. You're not here to play with the locals. Of course, Kithrak. We merely sought to. No excuses. Question, kill, then move on. Find the weapon. Our queen watches us. Fail her at your peril. A red dragon. I envy its knight. Would that I rode such a steed. A crash must be near. Come, my kin await. The dragons serve Githyanki. I'll see it does you no harm. Follow me. We are close to the cure we seek. Ryder, my time is short. Lead me to... Shh, shh, shh. Such a familiar tone. Were I not merciful, I would slice the skin clean from your meat. Yet you are not bleeding. For I am nothing if not merciful. Your name, child. Lazel. Lazel. Proud, regal, even. You will call me Gestil Kithrak. Vos, Knight Supreme, the Queen's Silver, the Queen's Sword. I am who you say. A Gaik vessel has fallen from the sky, Lazel. Thieves aboard have taken a weapon most precious. It is polyhedric in shape and inscribed with the sacred runes of our people. You suddenly feel a strange anxiety take hold. Not your own, but that of the artifact you carry. Somehow, it's afraid you attune your mind to it. The artifact does not want to fall into the Gith Raiders' hands any more than it does the absolute followers. Take word to your crash. You are to join our search. Speak up, child. Affirm your mandate. Duty, Kithrak. I shall alert my caretaker with haste. The Kithrak nods, content with Lazel's answer. You serve your queen well, child. 
Take your slaves and hunt those who escaped the Geich ship. They must carry the weapon. I fly now to Vlakith, our undying queen. She will see your faith rewarded in this plane and ours. A current of deception carries Voss's words. Wherever he flies, it is not to Vlakith. To Danos! To the sky! You did well to intervene, vexed as I am to admit it. The Gestil Kithrak would have flayed our skin and left our carcasses to burn in the sun. All for the sake of the artifact that we carry. The crash is near, this much we know. We follow the path forward and into the valley. No one, not even the ignoble Gestil Kithrak, will keep me from my purification. We're ready to head to your camp. Are you? Excellent. Lead the way. I'm fine. Listen up, Icarus. No, no. An owlbear. Dog pants through a ball held firmly in his mouth. He relinquishes the ball. It is well chewed and slick with drool. His eyes track the ball avidly. He shuffles on his paws, ready to chase after it. Scratch's tongue lolls out happily, his tail wagging even faster.
You know, I never pictured myself as a hero. Never thought I'd be the one they'd toast for saving so many lives. And now that I'm here... I hate it. This is awful. Enjoy myself. There's a worm in my brain. I'm surrounded by idiots, and all I've got to drink is wine that tastes like vinegar. That means I have to survive tonight and this party. All I want is a little fun. Is that so much to ask? By the hells, sex, my dear, a night of passion. And not with you, just to be clear. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> Ugh, no. Anyway, don't let me keep you. I'm sure you have someone else to sniff around. Hello. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. I've a needle in my tunic, after all. I assure you, I've dreamt of it a thousand times over. You won't find a more learned opinion on this matter, I assure you. Volo carefully holds one of your eyes open and begins to prod uncertainly with the needle. The needle finds the gap between eyeball and socket. Volo frowns and begins to push. Pain shoots through your body as the needle snags on your optic nerve. I think I have it! The needle seesaws back and forth, plucking the nerve like a harp string. Oh, bother. There's some obstacle in the way. I shall need a more robust implement. Volo carefully withdraws the needle from your eye. Then, reaching into his bag, he produces an ice pick. Are you certain? We're nearly there. As you wish. But when your skin starts to peel away, Remember, Volo offered to help. Ah, hells. I was hoping you wouldn't notice I was gone. Really? I'm honored. In truth, I don't feel in a festive mood, and I didn't want to cast a gray cloud over the night. These people are still in danger. A thousand perils will still threaten them. They aren't ready to get on the road on their own.
You're good at it. You've given me some just by being here. But off with you. This is your day. Have a dance. Enjoy the music. Some time alone beneath the stars, and I'll be back to my old self. Promise. Still, it's a night to remember. You've made sure of that. Beautiful night, don't you think? It's a view I would once have... She preferred it when we were alone. Curled up before a crackling hearth with some... ancient, esoteric tome between us. Ink. Oh, not everyone is comfortable being alone with their thoughts. Though, I never felt alone with a book in my hand. Or with her for company. I speak of Tara. My Tressen. Assistant. My constant companion through all the ills and tribulations my hubris has thrust upon me. She'd be most impressed by our efforts saving these tieflings. Proud, even. And I've given her little to be proud of recently. After I was afflicted with my condition. I locked myself in my tower for an entire year. Consoled, wallowing in my self inflicted tragedy, given up on myself. But Tara never did. It was her encouragement, her research that led me to my treatment. Once we knew that magically infused items were the key, she went out to find them for me. She saved my life. After so long being cared for by someone else, it feels good to have repaid the favor. Not directly to Tara, but to these poor tieflings. I'm sure she would approve. Smart does her a disservice. She's a fine wizard in her own right, though somewhat held back by her lack of opposable thumbs. You remind me of her somewhat. There's a steeliness in you. An unwavering tenacity, even in the face of... To be frank, quite dire odds. Wish she were here for me to make a formal introduction. But I would never ask her to undertake such a journey. She's safer at home. Besides, she was always telling me I needed to spread my wings, so to speak. Find mortal friends instead of hanging onto Mistress coattails. So that's what I'm doing. I hope. I assure you, were you to meet Tara, you would see the comparison for the flattery it is. But perhaps that's not a point worth laboring further. Suffice it to say, I think rather a lot of you. And there aren't many on this plane who I'd give such high praise. Right. Understood. You shall hear no more on the subject from me. Consider this budding romance thoroughly nipped. Though I hope our friendship need not come to such an abrupt end. Go! Indulge in the frivolities. They're good for the heart. And mine will be all the lighter to see you enjoying yourself. You have no idea how good it feels to see these people smiling. The singing we could probably do without, but even so, thank you. Go on, do your rounds. But if they hand you something purple, don't drink it. I think they got into Ethel's potions. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. Strange. You know who I never thought I'd find myself caring for? Your words, not mine. But not what I mean. 
I mean, desperate people, like those refugees. Never gave them much thought. Certainly not that bunch in the grove. And yet we came through for them. We saved their lives. Odd. That's more easily said by some than others. But nobody's here to debate right from wrong. Share a bottle with me? It's quite a bottle. I liberated one of the finer vintages earlier. Best enjoyed someplace private, I think. We should wait a little while. Until the others have drifted off. Best not keep me waiting. I'd prefer not to entertain myself. Good gods. It hardly has any effect. Oh, Mistra, have mercy on us all. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy, who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it, much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself, the Lady of Mysteries, the goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse, and later, even my lover. Oh, yes. We enjoyed each other's company. Body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. I tried to convince her. I pouted, I pleaded, swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess, and yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. 
He almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured and shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms. Until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought. Until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? The answer was to try, and the outcome was to fail. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in. Into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A door buried and suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, Remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner we might cross paths with a miracle round the bend then again we might not all of this it must feel like a betrayal say the word and we'll part ways that is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice. But if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. No one back home will ever believe this. <laughs> 